What's the best spoken word performance? How is, how is spoken word best delivered? I look back to the past when I'm trying to understand what's going on now and, and, and where things should go. And if you look back to 1969 when the Watts Prophets came out with the Black Voices on the Streets of Watts, or 1970 when the Last Poets came out with their self-titled album, or Gil Scott Heron in 70 also came out with Small Talk on 125th and Lennox, it was raw, pure, uh, at most it had you know, some percussion. And before long, you had the Watts Prophets with more musicality. The last poets with more musicality. And the same thing with Gil Scott Heron in 71 when he came out with Pieces of a Man and he had his boy Brian Jackson on keys. He had Hubert Laws, who was jazz royalty, right? So Hubert and Ronnie Laws are, are, are jazz win artists. So Hubert is a flautist or flutist, however you say it back in the days. If you remember in the 80s, their younger family members came out with that you know, very special, da, 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 da. but you know, before that, Hubert, Ronnie were, were royalty. Speaking of royalty, you had Ron Carter, who like Charles Mingus is one of the biggest names that ever was in jazz uh, bass playing. He was on that. The Revolution Will Not Be Televised that came off that Pieces of a Man album, which again is something that's musically famous, separate and apart from the poem. And then the Watts Prophets would be associated with Quincy Jones, with Horace Tapscott, who of course is jazz piano royalty. And in 1973, you had one of the last poets, Jalal Mansour Nuruddin, came out with Hustlers Convention, had the backing with the music by Cool and the Gang, which again is a situation where the music is almost as famous as the poem itself. Spoken word grew into all types of different aspects of, of, of bringing people in. Even in the mid 70s, you had Ntozaki Shanga for colored girls who've considered suicide when the rainbow was enough. That was a poem brought to life through a play. And then 20 years later, Reggie Gaines, who was a spoken word artist, who was very instrumental in that bring the noise, bring the funk, which if you recall, was like the Hamilton of its day. It was a, it was a big deal. And there's been a lot of work with plays where deaf poetry came to Broadway. It's been a lot of that. I remember small things from back when I was doing New Week and stuff and on St. Mark's people were coming out with spoken word plays and it's been spoken word plays all around the country as I visited different places people were doing that and then there are things that were even more of a production you had Jay Ivey with the stuff he did for the NBA you had Shane Koizan doing stuff for the Olympics when it was in Canada then there's like stories that are kind of funny kind of interesting daring I believe my man Lewis from St. Louis did a tour where he was using like I don't know sparklers or something in his hand for effect. My man Slick Vic Lowe, like Slankston Hughes in Baltimore, came to the show one day and just, he had on a chicken head costume and did everything in character. So his poems had chicken references. When you talk to him off stage, he might cluck and walk away from you. It's still novelty, right? It's not something he could do every day. And actually, if you ask him to this day, he'll say that wasn't him. And then there's Ed. Ed Mabry, who was not a small petite guy, and he does dance sometimes with his poetry, and it's all fresh to me in the moment. But in regards to what is sustainable, it is when that man or woman comes to the microphone and they have a mastery of the art. So it goes all the way back to the first last poets, first Gil Scott Heron, first Watts Prophets, when it's just raw and that voice, that cadence, uh, using that microphone to equalize your treble and your bass, however is most effective in that moment. Without the bells and whistles is when spoken word truly shines. When it's performed to perfection, there's no music, no play, no jazz, no fireworks that can add to it to the extent that it moves the listener's mind and heart and soul into an unforgettable experience born in energy transfer. When it gets down to energy transfer, that's when it's performed best.